Hello everybody, no difficulty in choosing a topic for my latest fortnightly vlog as a commercial property case has in the last week made rare inroads into the national press and it's the Tate Modern viewing platform case it's the decision of the Supreme Court in Fern versus the Board of Trustees of the Tate Gallery and it's all about the concept of nuisance in 2012, a highly exclusive residential apartment block called Neo Bankside was completed in London. Some of the flats having floor to ceiling glass panels on one or more sides offering sweeping vistas of the capital from the flats. A few years later, nearby in 2016, a new 10-storey extension to the Tate Modern was completed, known as the Blavatnik Building, which housed a top floor viewing gallery around all four sides, enabling a 360-degree panorama of central London. In the foreground of that panorama were the Neo Bankside flats. Now the viewing gallery attracted over half a million visitors a year, many of whom were very intrigued by the very visible lavishness of the interiors of these extensively glazed flats. Said visitors did and do take many photographs from the Tate Modern viewing gallery of the flats interiors and their occupants and frequently posted them on social media. The flat residents suffering from a goldfish bowl complex first took their grievance to the High Court in 2017, seeking an injunction or damages on the grounds that they had an actionable nuisance against the Tate Modern and lost. They went to the Court of Appeal and lost again. But they were undeterred on the grounds of principle and no doubt relatively unaffected by pecuniary restrictions remember that these were highly exclusive and expensive flats they went to the supreme court and they've just won by a split judges three to two decision now what is legal nuisance well there are three categories of nuisance affecting private land firstly encroachment onto land cricket balls landing from a cricket club constantly into a garden for example Secondly, direct physical injury to land, tree roots causing damage to a neighbour's foundations or a wall perhaps. And thirdly, interference with a person's quiet enjoyment of their land, i.e. no physical encroachment but sensory encroachment such as excessive noise. Now the decision in the Tate Modern case was the first adjudication that visual interference could be a nuisance of that third type, visual interference of the flat owner's enjoyment. It is not difficult to imagine how oppressive living in such circumstances would feel for any ordinary person, rather like living in a zoo, went one of the judgments. Visual intrusion can amount to an actionable nuisance where there is substantial interference with the ordinary use and enjoyment of the property. So should developers be worried? Is the prospect of new buildings causing a nuisance by an ability to see into adjoining properties something that they will now need to consider buying off as developers sometimes have to do when multi-storey new builds interfere with rights of light? Well, very probably not. The main judgment in the Tate Modern case from Lord Leggett held that the relevant question was whether the defendant, the Tate here, was making common and ordinary use of its land. Now the fact that the Tate was inviting members of the public to look out into adjoining flats from a viewing gallery was not common and ordinary. It was manifestly a very particular and exceptional use of land. If the Tate had been making ordinary use of its land, for example by office use or residential use, the flat owners could not have complained. Draw an analogy with nuisance by excessive noise. Carrying out drilling works 
in a terraced house in the daytime is ordinary work which a party should be entitled to do. That's not nuisance. Carrying out the drilling work at a quarter past midnight is not ordinary and is therefore a nuisance to the next door neighbour. So using a viewing platform to gawp into and take photographs of residential flats is similarly abnormal, extraordinary and therefore a nuisance. But glancing into flats across the road while working at an office desk is not. It's therefore hard to think of circumstances apart from public viewing platforms where developers could be running the risk of creating a nuisance by visual interference although of course these lofty viewing areas are now common in many major UK cities. Just a couple of further points. It was held not to be a defence that the flat owners could take steps to mitigate the nuisance such as by installing blinds or curtains. That was not the flat owner's responsibility. Draw an analogy here with rights of light situations it's not a defence to ask the affected property to turn on more lamps. And with nuisance by noise, it's not reasonable to, to expect the affected party to block out the noise by wearing earplugs all the time. Also, it's not a defence to say that the affected party occupies an abnormally sensitive property, such as a flat with large windows. Now, the case has been referred back to the High Court, by the way, to ascertain whether the flat owner should be awarded an injunction or damages with the decision to, on that to follow at a later date unless the parties settle beforehand. On balance therefore, despite the prominence in the press, developers can be relatively relaxed. The case of Fern and the Board of Trustees of the Tate Gallery may indeed have only nuisance value. I'll see you all again in a fortnight.